Is that good, Pumpkin? Finally eating your food? She's been whining at me, running up to me, yelling. The way she does when she wants food, I'm like, what's the problem? You have, your food's right here. Cats, sometimes that's just the way they are. And Toby, Toby, you say hi? Say hello, Toby. How you feeling, bud? <laughs> this is just, you done? He's pooped. <laughs> There's your Toby update. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. So what are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Doing a little mini vlog for this Wednesday's video because Saturday's video is going to be a garden tour. I know you like the vlogs and uh, outside everything is a mess right now. So I was just like, you know, why don't we just do a vlog instead of cleaning up and trying to make things nice? Just take it easy and get some stuff done. Oh, take it easy is quite the right terminology. It's hot. That's the other thing. It is warm today. It's supposed to approach 100. Don't think it's going to get there. Tomorrow's supposed to get to be around 100. And look at the table. There's there's, there's so many projects going on. <laughs> In order to film a nice, relaxing video where I'm like potting something up or talking about plants, I have to get the table cleaned off and looking nice. And I don't. I just. It's not going to happen. I've been dipping my toes into lots of little projects that need to get done. A lot of it's been the drip, which I did start. A vlog for Saturday yesterday and it starts off with me talking about all this new drip supply stuff over here that won't be out until the Saturday after next Saturday so that was a weird way to say it it'll be out in September so I forgot that Saturday's video that comes out after this one is the 31st it's the last day of the month <laughs> there's 30 right August 31 days I'm pretty sure I think so anyways but you get the point so there will be a video with all the stuff that's been going on with all this drip stuff over here. And the other things that I have going on are over here in this gorilla cart. So uh, getting some pottery glued back together, that's going to take some time. That's probably not going to happen in this video. It's just something I'm doing at my leisure and have somebody else who's really doing the bulk of the work. I found one of my old fountains that used to be in the background of a lot of videos when I would film them in the grow space. And I was thinking that might look kind of cool over here. Pardon the pad. Toby, he's very leaky, so I have to have pads out for him when he comes outside. I started working on this spot last week, and it never finished it because it was the very end of the video, and it was already a really long video. I was thinking that fountain might look nice over there in that corner. I, mean, I have it. It's just sitting around. It's not doing anything. Collecting dust, so may as well put it to some use. Uh, the bowl, that's got to go. It belongs inside. There's no hole in the bottom, so <laughs> I don't want to leave that out here turbo no it's not for you no coconuts for turbo no 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 you can see he already sunk his teeth into this one i know you really want those but they're not for you sorry baby i have this other bowl. excuse me excuse me i have another bowl over here that i think would look good over there on the cabinet it has a drainage hole in the bottom yeah i like that i think that looks good i'll move some things around and make it look nicer when it's done Floral foams here because I have a few orchids that are they're starting to age out. They're getting some spots on their flowers, but I thought it might look nice to just arrange them in here and maybe tuck them back into that. There might be too much sun over here for this, but I want to put the orchids together in this bowl regardless. I don't know if I'll end up keeping them in that spot because, like I said, there might be too much afternoon sun, but we will see. I desperately need to repot this begonia, but it's just this heat. It's not bad right now. Right now it's like 84. It's early. But I don't think that it would be smart to uh, mess with its roots when it's this warm out. When it's going to be in the hundreds for a couple of days. I thought that was a neat variegated leaf. It's not. It's just a crunchy, sad, dying leaf. This is the Double Dot, I think is its name. And it was a little plug that I got from Green Escape on Etsy last winter. It's grown nicely, but I think it would grow even better if it were bumped up into a larger container. It has so many... Isn't it beautiful? It's such a nice-looking begonia. So many spots on there. It's been getting a good amount of sun. I've had it outside where the irrigation can hit it because it's, you know... I don't know if it's overdue. I was going to say it's overdue for a repot, but it may... Well, no. Yeah, that's overdue. <laughs> the roots are coming out the bottom. That means it's time to repot it. But again, it's so warm that I just don't think that would be a great idea right now. So, uh, yeah, the, your four-minute intro, <laughs> that's what's going on. Just lots of little projects. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need this floral foam here. The idea with these orchids, I should show you the orchids, that's what we're going to talk about. 
is that you just set them in the bowl and you use the uh, floral foam or whatever you have really to pile around them to create some stability. But I think these pots are too deep to do that with. See, I was talking about how the flowers got some spots on them. They're starting to age out. They're still really pretty though. I'd like to do something nice with these. That only works if you're using something deep enough to put all three pots in. So I guess if I had them like up here and mounded and I had some sheet moss, which I don't think I do, then that could work. But really to make this happen, I'm probably gonna have to unpot them and just fill the whole thing with bark. Which would not be a smart thing to do with this kind of heat. Well, you've been getting chewed on, haven't you? Got some bite marks on the flowers. With this heat, they shouldn't be doing that, but I think I might do it anyways. Just because I want to get it done. <laughs> if I wait a couple more days, then I won't be able to get it done for this video either. Mainly that the flowers only have so much time left on them anyways. If these were fresh spikes that didn't have any buds on them, that'd be a different story. But they're pretty much spent. They're not spent, but they're not going to be on there for too terribly much longer anyway. So that main thing is just to not upset the roots too much. So I'm going to go grab my aeroid mix and hope we can find some sphagnum moss because something this big... I want to make sure there's some moisture retention in there, and, and that might be the way I have to do this to actually unpot them and put them in here. That really wouldn't be ideal, though. It's not what I should do. I do think that would be fun, though, to have a bowl that just has some Phalaenopsis orchids in it or Paphiopedulums. That would be a lot prettier. Lady slippers in here, a whole bunch of them. That'd be so cute, but I don't have any, and they don't like me. They like me if I leave them inside during the summer, but I always move them outside and then they rot. It gets too hot for them, so I know what I'm doing wrong. I just keep making the same mistakes with them. I could try again with something different maybe in the future. It's also not something I can find for sale around here either. You have to get them during the, like, one weekend a year when the orchid sale's going on at the Missouri Botanical Garden. Otherwise, the nurseries don't ever carry lady slippers around here, and I don't like to order them online because you just never really know what you're going to get. I've always been disappointed with the ones I got out. That's neither here nor there. I'm going to go find some bark and sit down and tinker around with this thing, see if we can make something out of these orchids in this bowl. Hopefully it'll look nice. No, never mind. I'm stopping myself. Also need to turn the fan on. Just going to make some background noise, but you all know this camera, this thing. It'll overheat in a heartbeat if I don't have some air moving around it. So here's the thing. I've been talking about how it's too hot to repot plants. If that's the case, then the very last thing I should be doing is unpotting orchids, even if I'm barely touching their roots. And just know that's not going to be a good idea. They're not going to like that. So instead, I, I think I can make this work. May as well try the thing that's going to be less of a problem for them before going in and... Oh, that was sharp. The tripod needs to be oiled. That's not how that should have gone. Uh, may as well try the thing that's going to have less of an impact first on these, right? So what I'm going to do here is get these kind of centered up like this. Get them squared up in the middle as best as I can. Something like that. I'm leaving the bamboo skewers in these for right now. These were just in there for shipping. But right now they're useful because they give me kind of an anchor to hold on to. I'm going to tape those together. That's going to help keep these upright and keep them in place while I try and get the floral foam on here. That floral foam is what's really going to be doing most of the work. The foam. I have a few extra chunks of it, so I thought I would go ahead and use it. It's not one of my favorite things. It's dusty. It makes me itchy. I don't, I'm not a fan of the product. But for something like this, I think it'll come in useful. Being impulsive because I just, I'm in the mood to plant stuff. That's all that that is. I really just want to get my hands dirty and plant some things but that wouldn't be the best thing for the orchids so we're gonna hold off on that with the foam i'm just cutting it with a knife oh god that was a horrible sound hopefully i will remember to do something about that so y'all don't have to hear it that was just awful cutting up chunks and squeezing them in whatever fashion i need to to create pressure in here so that these pots don't move around okay there it is. I went ahead and I did the majority of that off camera because the sound was just, it was terrible. That's not anything anybody wants to listen to. And I'm sure you got the picture, right? You just cut up the foam and fill in all the cracks until there's no give. So everything holds in place. Tried my best to get each one of these level. This one orchid right here, 
is favoring growth off in a different direction. It wants to go away from everything else, really inward towards everything else. But because of that, I had to put it in a, an angle. Otherwise, the new leaf that's coming up was going to be smashed into the inside of everything. And I didn't think that would be good for the plant. And that's fine. I think that that's one of those things where once this is done and finished, I'm probably going to be the only one who can really even notice that that's what's going on. Anyways, so now we need to cover up all this stuff. I had some stones that are like foam stones that were covered in moss that I thought would look really pretty to pile up in here. I can't find them. I don't know where they went. So I'm going to take this sheet moss here and try and get it wet. I put water in here, but I guess maybe not enough. I have a lot of sheet moss that I bought in bulk a few years ago, and it's getting kind of old. You know, this stuff's preserved, but it sits in a bag in my grow space, and the grow space gets pretty hot and humid during the summertime, so it has aged some. But again, I, that might be something where I'm thinking I'm the only one who's going to notice that it doesn't look right. See what I'm doing here? I'm just packing it down into the water. I want to get it nice and wet so that it pulls apart more easily and uh, it makes it easier to see the green side. So with the sheet moss, usually one side's brown and dried out and the other side is green because it's dyed, it's preserved moss. Sometimes it will have spores in it that can spring back to life and you can start fresh moss that just grows on top of it. But that's, well, that's not the point. Nobody cares about that. You know what I'm saying here. Just want to get some nice green chunks out of this and then take those, rip them off. See, so I can see the green side versus the brown side. It's easier to tell and have that distinction when it's wet. I'm just gonna go through and pack that in around the top of the foam as best as I can. I don't want to go in too close to the crowns of the orchids. That piece is pretty brown. I think I'll use it anyway, so, uh, because that can cause rot. I still want things to stay open in there. Oftentimes when you find orchid arrangements like this for sale at floral places, what are those called? At a florist. Uh, they're just moss all the way through. And they're pretty much prepared the same way. It's just floral foam down below and then moss all around the top. But uh, I don't really usually like the way they do it because it smothers the apex, the growth point on the orchid. This is, there's a lot of brown on that one. I don't want to use that piece would prefer for everything to be nice and green. I'll try and unfold some more of this. Yeah, there's a nice big chunk I can get in there. I don't mind if it spills over the edges some. I think that actually looks kind of cool. Oop, bumping the camera, sorry. Yeah, I think that looks kind of neat when it spills over the edges. I like that nice lush mound. So you, maybe you can see, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Pathio pedulums are the lady slipper orchids. And those to me make more sense in a situation like this because they're more of a terrestrial or semi-terrestrial type of orchid, whereas a pathiopedulum like this is a purely epiphytic orchid. They grow up in the trees. The pathiopedulums are epiphytic too, but uh, hopefully you understand what I'm saying here. One of them grows on the ground, one of them grows up in the trees. And to me, it just, I think, would look more interesting to have the pedulums in something like this, the lady slippers, because it would just look like a little little spot in the woods, kind of, I don't know, like something from a fairy tale, I guess. Is, that's how you would describe that. Something that looks, it's just cute. Whimsical. That's the word I was trying to find. Whimsical. Uh, you still sort of get that with the Phalaenopsis orchids. If there are roots, you can see this root right here. I want to make sure that's going over it. I don't want to pinch it down because that would make for an unhappy orchid. We come in and then there are some divots in here where things are still open. And I'm going to try and find some nice green pieces, little balls to put together like this. I think it looks neat when there's kind of that lumpy texture with the moss. I've always thought that that looked neat. I like, you know, a nice long spring of it too. Sprig of it, not spring of it. But I think it looks cool when you got the little balled up chunks in there too. And that's one thing I've seen people do that looks really nice using various types of mosses. Keep bumping the camera. Hopefully that's not messing things up too much. Where you have various shades because they're all different types of dried mosses and lichens. That would look really cool in something like this. I'm just not doing that because, well, I have a ton of this sheet moss here. So I may as well go ahead and use it 
instead of buying more of something else, right? Yeah, that looks good. I think that's everything. There's a little bit of foam still showing right there. Make another small ball. Just tuck that ball in to that spot. This is also helping to add some pressure so that things stay where they're supposed to be. Don't want things moving around very much, if at all. It'd be better for the orchids if things just held still. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. Looks pretty. I'm gonna need to rinse it all off. The pot was already kind of dirty when I brought it out here. I'd had it on a storage shelf in the garage. But I figured I'd be giving this a heavy rinse anyways. So, yeah. And that looks good. I love that. And then you can maybe see in here how it's open in the middle. I didn't do the moss all the way through. That's just purely a plant care thing. It would look better if the moss went all the way through, but I just don't want it, like I mentioned before, to be surrounding the crowns of everything. I guess I could take a ball of it and maybe stick it down in there, but I, I just don't think it's necessary. I know better, and I don't think it's something anybody else will look at that and go, oh, there's no moss in the middle. Like, who cares, right? I don't think it matters, and it's only going to hurt the plants to have too much of it in there. And I also want things to be opened in the middle because that gives me a spot in here that I can come in and water more easily. I can just direct the water right down here towards the middle to make sure that they're getting the water they need. If there's too much moss in here, then it's going to be difficult for me to really tell if I'm getting the water to the orchids. So I'm just gonna leave it open. Okay, and then now I can go ahead and pull these sticks out from the orchids. Those don't need to be in there anymore. Let me take this tape off and uh yeah look they they're holding in place they're not moving they've got some wind on them because they have the fan on blowing on the camera which i'm sure is annoying in the audio but if i don't have that going then it's gonna just overheat constantly the camera that is so the next thing that i could do with this would be if i had the twine i don't but you can take twine or any type of you know string really something ideally that has more of an organic look to it and take your moss. I don't know if I have a spot where it's gonna show very well. Maybe I'll pull this clip up higher, put that up there. And you can take this moss and you ball it up right around that clip. You ball it up gently, not too tight. Don't want it to be smothering, <laughs> right? And then you take some string and wrap it around there very gently. And that looks neat. It's something you can do. I am instead going to go through these stems and see which ones even need the clips because these aren't orchids that have really big flowy flowers on them so some of them may not even need the clip uh that one does see how it fell forward i don't want to keep the clip on there i'll go ahead and put it down lower see how low i can get it yeah that looks like it's still holding it up where i would want it to be but the clip's not up there in line of sight this one over here has to be up kind of high i don't mind for the fowls to have their more natural, which is a more natural inflorescence where they just splay out right from the main growth. But I also think that this would take up a lot of space if I did things that way. How about you? Do you need the stake? I think this one probably does. It's just kind of being faux supported by it because it's wrapped around it. No, well, maybe not. Eh, yeah, no, I think that looks better with the stake on it. I realize the camera's not quite in this place where you'd be able to tell, but you have to take my word for it. That looks better when it's up right, up higher. And just like that, I've misplaced the clip. What'd I do with the clip that I just took off of it? Really? It was just in my hand. I can't find it anywhere. Do we see it? Am I gonna see it when I'm editing the video? Maybe. I don't, where, where'd it go? Did I put it in here? Is it in the, that would be stupid. I don't know what I did with it. Well, hopefully I can take one of the clips off of one of these other flower stalks and use it for that one because that one needs it. What about you? Do you need it? No? It looks like it's holding steady. If it doesn't need the stake, then I'm going to take it out. Okay. All right, good. And I didn't misplace this clip, so I can go ahead and put that back over here on this one because it does need it or it's going to fall forward. Yeah, these aren't flower stalks that are have really heavy flowers on them. Spikes, I should say, that have heavy flowers on them. Oh, there's an extra down here. Could have used that one. You can see this one up here. There's only like four flowers on there, so it doesn't need the stake. I'm not that concerned about it. They're 
already up and doing their thing if it doesn't have to have a support on it. I don't want the support to be there because it's unattractive. I don't want too many sticks in here that <laughs> aren't actually parts of the flowers. Let me get this off of there. There we go, that's off of there. If you have a, a situation at home where you're concerned about these being knocked around a whole bunch, then it probably wouldn't hurt to go ahead and leave the stakes on them. But like I said, I'm not, not all that concerned about that. These are small flowers, very small inflorescence. So I just don't think that it really needs it on most of them. So the ones where it does need it, like that one right here, this one, in the back, I'm going to take my clippers. I'm keeping the clip down low so it's not as noticeable, but I want it to be up high enough so that there's not too much stress down there. And I'm just gonna take my snips and trim the stake down. I think that would be the best way to do it so it's not as up and in your face. Oh, these are metal. <laughs> these are metal and that's not what these clippers are for. Okay, I think of something else here. Okay. Maybe just took some of the life off my clippers, but I got it trimmed down. You can see, you can clip that down low. And then it's not as noticeable, especially since the camera doesn't want to focus on anything that I'm doing right now. But I think you get the point. I'm gonna trim up the rest of these and then I think this will be done. So I think that looks a lot better, having the stakes trimmed down. This isn't something I would recommend doing if you have big flower heads, or if you, a lot of flat, it's not a flower head. That's not what you would call this, but if your spike is really big and has a lot of flowers on it, I wouldn't do what I just did. You just gotta learn to live with the clips and the stakes or do the little balls of moss around them. But I think it looks better without too much of that going on in there. One thing I forgot to mention was that I did pull this apart when I was working on the foam and rearrange it. I pulled these out and put it back together because I forgot to position the flowers outward. They were all jumbled up in the middle, but I was paying more attention to what was going on down here than what was going on up there. The one orchid right here, the flowers on it aren't really, they just, they, I don't know, I couldn't find a position to make it work. This one is sort of growing at an angle, so it could have faced out this way, but then when I did that, these were in the middle and you couldn't see them, so I just said forget it. We'll just have to say that I think that this thing's best angle is from over here. <laughs> That's fine. That looks good. It looks really good. I like how that looks in the bowl with the moss and everything and clean and fun. I really wish that they would make these holes bigger in the back of these fountains because that's not, it's not a, just a little bit this way and that like that would be so much better. This is not, it's not ideal as far as wiggle room to get things done. I need to get some pieces put back together on this thing that has lights in the front that poke up through the bottom and two of them have fallen down. I took this inside and tested it out, wanted to make sure that this thing even works before setting it up out here because I realized in order to plug this in, I have to move that entire cabinet, which is going to be uh, not difficult, just kind of time consuming. So I gotta take everything off the top of it and then uh, move the furniture out of the way and you know just all that stuff that you got to do in order to make it happen i don't know i don't think you guys you're not going to be able to see down in there i just don't know how to make that happen you can kind of see see all those cords all those wires i need to get those and pop them up into the bottom so that the front of this you can come over here and see the front there's supposed to be a light that shines through all three of these and there's only this one the other two i'm assuming hoping that they're down there somewhere. I don't know, this has been in the garage for a long time, so it's entirely possible that maybe a mouse or something has gotten in there and chewed on them. I don't have to figure that out. Okay, I got the one in the middle put back into place. Standing behind this thing with my hand, my entire body kind of contorted in a weird, okay, I think I got it. This is difficult, that hole's too little. There we go. All right, you know, I don't even actually know if these LEDs work. I saw a glow coming from down inside the basin when I checked the pump to see if the pump was working. I know this one over here works because that one's in place. These two right here, I don't know. I know one of them works. I tried to lift that bulb up higher, but it's stuck in there. I actually don't think it's even supposed to actually be up that high, but, well, I don't want them to pop back out. So I pulled them up maybe a little bit higher than I needed to. All right, go ahead and get this put back together and then go move all kinds of things so I can get this set up. This is 
the part of this entire thing that bugs me the most. Everything hooks into this one piece and it's hard to keep this piece out of the water. And I know that the whole point here is that you have a seal. So supposedly it's going to be safe. Supposedly, did I say supposedly? That's not a word. Supposedly it'll be safe, but uh, I, know, I just don't trust it. I have that tape out here. So maybe I should try and use that to, uh, maybe I could just tape this as well as I'm going to say, I could tape this to the side. So it's not down inside of there because that has, like I said, been something that has always bothered me. I need to get this pump positioned properly too. It's at an angle. It's at an angle and it's going to stick up out of the water. I'm going to have to have this thing filled to the max at all times. No, it doesn't want to adjust. All right. Well, I guess we just have to see how that works. Take some tape here and try and just hold this in place. Probably that tape. Okay, the tape's not really holding because that's the piece that I was just using <laughs> for uh, keeping those stakes put together. Not going to want to have to redo this, so I should probably not be using masking tape because, you know, weather. But the spot this is going in is somewhat sheltered. And also, this piece, oh, you couldn't even see what I was doing. Not that you miss much, I just put tape over the parts that connects the power together. This is, it goes in a fairly sheltered location, so I'm not really worried about that much moisture getting onto this. So hopefully the tape will hold up just fine. That's good. Okay, pump is cleaned up and ready to go, and I just need to come over here and I, I gotta move everything. Okay, I think this should work. Hopefully. It's got a nice long cord. It's the only thing I could find that was smaller than 16 gauge. This is 14 gauge which is good, got critters out here. Need nice thick wire. I just realized you don't know what's happening. So I, oh, okay. Maybe I didn't have that clipped in there all the way. It's the next day. I took everything apart over here, moved everything, and then got to that fountain, filled it up with water because, okay, we can just go over there. We're gonna talk about it. I filled up the fountain because I figured once I have this pulled out, I'm not going to want to try and get the water poured in there and everything. I plugged it in, or went to plug it in, and this was already in the outlet, and this is the plug, which already, but how does it have so much corrosion on it? When it's, that's a hangnail. It's in it, the outlet over there is covered, so that is something that I need to pay attention to it and clean off. This plug right here goes to the lighting that goes underneath the steps over here. I want the lighting there. The steps are a dark color. They just, the, one, it looks good, and for the big part, it just it helps people see. So they don't trip. Uh, I couldn't get anything else plugged in over here. Both the things don't fit. This is the next tape. I had to order a new outlet thing to use out here. So I'm going to plug this in back there, and then I'll put it somewhere over here. I don't know. And throw a pot or a bucket, something on top of it to keep everything dry, and I'll have everything plugged in inside of there. The thing that was supposed to be simple got overly complicated. Okay. Is that going to work? That was severely overly complicated. This is a new outlet here. Got a piece that you pull out in order to run your cord through. Here's the piece. That thing did not want to come out. Okay. Is that good? That should be good. I should probably check to make sure that this actually has power before I move forward. What if there's no, what if it doesn't work? This would be a big waste of time. Uh-huh. Okay. Looks good. Okay. That's good. So I can just go ahead and get this thing. Scooch back into place. Hopefully, easier said than done. Oh, come on, come on, almost there. Okay, lights in the fountain are plugged in. I need to go get something to put over that thing before I forget. I know if I move on to something else, I'm not going to remember that I need to cover that up and then I'm gonna water plants and the whole thing's gonna trip. Okay, I think that'll do. Make sure to use a clear one so that it, like, well. In my head, I was thinking that using a clear one made more sense because then I'd be able to see the indicator lights on it, but I can't, I can't even see them, so it doesn't really matter. I have to hope that they stay functional. Lemons, I made a big mistake yesterday. I left this lantern sitting right there on the patio. Should not have done that. You want to see what happened to the other side? <laughs> My citrus popped. Oops, got some pop styrofoam in here. Hey, at least it was the back side. So otherwise I'd be going through pulling all those out and trying to make it look right. This is, this is fine. That's also why this has to sit in the shade back here and it can't be in the middle. I would ideally 
have had this in the middle and then done something small on each side or had two of these. But two of these, that's not happening. These things are expensive. Big lanterns, they cost a freaking fortune. One's enough. Okay, and now the orchids. Go ahead and get them moved over here. I was thinking about maybe leaving them under the umbrella for another day or two until this heat wave passes, but I was paying attention to the spot yesterday and it was looking like there actually wasn't that much sun over here because the angle of the sun has, you know, it's shifted. It's nowhere near as sunny now as it was before. Oh, I love that. That looks so good. I, I would like if there's something matching on each side of it, but it's fine. It's, it's gonna have to do. Yes, I know I need to get another piece of fabric to put back there. I'll get to it. I'm missing one of my balls, the buoys. Got the red one and the dark blue one here. Oh, no, it's right here. It just, it was blending into the cushion. I couldn't see it. Never mind. It's hot. Give me a break. It's like 97. It's just sweltering. Today is miserable. It is so gross outside. Mm hmm This is good. I'm going to get some new little tiki torches to go over here and another piece of fabric. And I think that that's going to just wrap this space up. I don't want to put too much on here. Like, I had a lot of stuff on here before. And the problem with that is it makes, you, you can't set anything over here. And one of the points of this is to be able to set stuff down. So you see how dirty this is already? That's actually one of the nice things I'm thinking about having, if I were to do two of these instead of one, is that I can have one in the front that's not underneath all this stuff. So I can take the one off the front and shake it off. And then that makes it, you know, not so gross if you do want to set stuff down in that spot. Oh yeah. I love that orchid arrangement. I think that looks so good. I saw my monkeys and some lanterns over here, but I think it'd just be too much to put those back up there. What do we think? Yeah, I know it's still off balance, but I think considering just working with what I had, not too bad. It'd be better if the fountain were a different color for it, more of a stone shade, but it's not. That's what it is. I could maybe like glue a bunch of tile or something to it. I don't see myself doing that, to be honest. Really, the only way to balance this out is to get another lantern, which I don't want to do. This is good. I'm good with this. Probably going to change out those tiki torches to something else, although they are balancing it out now. I didn't like the gold before, but now I'm like, okay, well, it's evening out the color tone. I should have ordered a black lantern. I don't know what I was thinking. I wanted to have the lantern full of lemons over here. It's like, oh, that's going to look so cool. Just citrus. It's so bright and fun looking. And I should use something that's a wood tone because we've got some wood tones on the furniture here and it'll stand out better against the green wall. But I don't have anything else that's that tone. That's not a color scheme I usually work with. So it made it more difficult to work with. And I don't even care about that. I just maybe I should have gone with the BBL, the big black lantern. The orchids are the main point here, though. That arrangement. I think that just looks so pretty. I absolutely love it. I did actually manage to get the, uh, well, pretty much everything back up here on the table, except for the dark blue and the dark red little blown glass buoy thing. Everything blends in, so you can't even tell, but at night, it'll stand out nicely because those all have candles and things in them, and I think that'll look good. I have the hiccups, and I've been trying to talk through it. It's not working out very well. What I was saying is that it blends in, so it's really not noticeable, the blue lanterns. Look, you can barely see them. That's why I have been redoing this whole spot, because once I put that green wall up, there was no contrast, so you couldn't even see all the fun, colorful stuff that was up here. And uh, But at night, but yeah, at night, it shows, and that'll be really pretty. Oh, also learned that apparently the candles I have in there are wax. I didn't know and they melted right through the lantern and totally ruined this cushion. I'll be getting new cushions sooner than I thought. Figured I'd give it a year or two, but that's, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not just that the wax is on there. I'm sure I can get the wax off somehow, but it stained it. I don't know if that's like reflection from the sun, if it started to burn the cushion. Uh, it was, the, I told y'all, it was hot yesterday. Today's even hotter, so I need to be more careful. I just didn't think about it. So, oops. Learning experience. Sorry, the fan's on. It was hot over there. Needed a breeze. Yeah, I think that looks good. You can even you can see the bowl all the way from back here. Those orchids are a good color for that spot. They really pop. This banana tree bugging anybody else? It's been bugging me. Yeah, it's covering everything up. I just, uh, I don't want to cut it. Maybe I should cut it down. The knife's still out here. Yes, the knife is still out here. I think I said this before. I don't even know how the bananas got over here. I know I did it. They didn't just magically appear. 
at some point over the years, I must have taken a pup from my big clump and just stuck one over here. But this is, it's growing right up in front of that basket and it gets in the way of the door. I'm constantly pruning on this banana so that you, know, you can walk through the door and get back here and water the plants. Just, there we go. Okay, well, go ahead, get out of the way. Yeah, oh, that's better. Much better. Coconut's a little crooked, but that's just because it's growing at an angle. You can't even really tell there's a coconut over there right now, can you? I just moved this over here a few days ago. This is one that I got basically bare root and it needed to be reestablished into its container. It's pushed up a couple new fronds. So I thought, okay, well, let's move it someplace where it can get some more light. So I brought it over here, the dichondras. I'll push back there. That's better. I think I need to find a different spot for it. But hey, I can see the basket again. That's good. Holy crap, this thing is hot. I think I need to wrap this up. Gonna spend a couple hours watering plants and just cleaning and tidying. Right now, when it's this hot, you know, triple digits, it's just about keeping things alive. Maybe do some pruning, but probably not. Just gonna be doing a lot of watering. In fact, I think these need water too, which is surprising. So I gave them a good soak before I did this. Something I forgot to mention, very important. Before I started this project, the day before, I gave the orchids a really, really, really heavy drink, make sure that, well, they were hydrated. You know, nice hydrated plants are more forgiving when you're moving them around. I should have mentioned that, but it doesn't matter. Okay, comment down below. Hope y'all are doing well. Maybe the heat's getting better for some of y'all by the time this video comes out. Uh, here, it's just, ugh. ugh this is just awful. <laughs> you know, it's weird. Sometimes it can be in the triple digits and it doesn't feel too bad. But I, I don't know, it's just the humidity, the intensity of the sun, something. It's, just, it's nasty. Although, today is hotter than yesterday, but it feels better than yesterday, so that's good. It, yeah, comment down below and say hi. I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, a great life, and things just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.